Good evening and welcome everyone. I'm T West and tonight I want to show you guys an arena game between Eddie and uh, PMR Keith. So let's take a quick look at the players. We have Purple over here as the Aztecs and Eddie also playing as the Aztecs so we have an Aztecs war on arena and I wanted to show this off because Eddie likes to go for some interesting builds. He's quite a good player on arena and in this game, he's going to go for a very fast fast castle and try to get up to the castle age as quickly as possible. So normally on an arena game, you'll see players going for eagle warriors and monks in the castle age to try and get the map control and pick up the relics. One way to do that is to click up about uh, 26 population in the dark age, build a market and a blacksmith, and then a barracks as you're advancing to castle followed by more monasteries and barracks and maybe even a siege workshop or more town centers if you want to build up in the back you can go with a castle a few different options but it'll normally start with the market blacksmith and a barracks as you're heading up followed by more barracks and monasteries eddie here likes to go for another build where he instead of waiting for like 25 26 pop he's going to click up 24 and in this game 23 population and then sell some stone so that he'll have the resources to get up to the castle age as fast as possible so here we are standard build putting six on sheep to start with now he's going to start sending villagers over to wood as he's scouting out the map so he scouted nearby and he's going to want to lure in these deer and let's take a quick look at the maps. He has his main gold and his main stone pretty far in the front, but this is a nice shape of gold for putting a mining camp right here and getting some good saturation with his villagers. Secondary stone in the front, but his two extra golds are in the back, along with having three deer and both boar in the back. Meanwhile, purple has his main gold uh, kind of close to a wall, but on the opposite side from Eddie. Secondary gold outside of his wall. And then main stone and gold in the back and another stone in the back so two gold piles forward but other than that his map is pretty safe and all of his resources are again inside of his walls it does have four deer which is good for him Eddie now bringing in this boar so six villages on sheep four on wood bring in the boar then he's going to build a house and start sending villages to build a mill and build and take the berries after that that villager going to garrison inside the town center Staying alive, Aztecs, of course, do start the game with Loom. So you never need to research Loom. You don't need to do it on Arena anyway, so it's not as big of an advantage as something like Arabia. But now going with the mill on the berries, I'm going to send his next uh, four villagers over to get berries, and of course he'll also be loading in this next boar as well. So three on berries, we'll probably send another villager berries, and then send a villager to go and take the boar. Normally, if you put three villagers on berries, the next, the timing for taking your second boar lines up with the villager after them. So either you can send the villager to take the boar, or you can just directly send the villager to the berries, or take another villager from your boar to go and get the other boar. And that's what he's going to do here. And now, since he is going to be trying to lure in these deer either to his town center or his mill, he's going to send a couple more villagers over to these berries so that he'll have enough villagers there to gather from the deer quickly when he does push the deer in. Now, going with a house and a farm, that's a nice little trick. If you build the house right next to the farm, then once the villager finishes the house, he or she will go over to the farm without much idle time in between. Now Eddie's taking in this boar, it'll be timed pretty well, maybe a tiny bit late, but no real worries. Villagers there to shoot the boar, and he'll have it nice underneath his town center. Gives in the villagers both to keep it safe and to get the boar positioned in the right location underneath the TC. Could have been a bit more this way, but overall a very good lore from him. Now he's going to start taking these deer, and he's going to push in some more deer towards his TC with his scout. Meanwhile, we see similar builds so far from Purple, but at this point, we'll probably see Purple start sending a few more villagers to wood soon. Meanwhile, Eddie, he's at a 20 out of 25 population, and he's still sending even more villagers to gather food, leaving only his first four on wood. As now luring this deer into his town center, he sent uh, a few more villagers over to Barry, so he has six over here, killing the deer underneath his town center, and making still more villagers 
for this sport. The advantage, of course, of having the deer underneath your town center is it makes it easier if you want to fast drop off your food. You can select the villagers under your town center and then garrison them all in the town center. At the mill, you manually have to select them and right click the mill and then retask them. So sometimes putting it under the TC can help you with the micro a bit. There we go, 500 food garrisoning the villagers just as he clicks up and drops off the food from that deer. And now, once he's clicked up to feudal on 23 population, he's gonna be sending some villagers over to gold. Meanwhile, we see Purple has added more villagers to wood. He's made a second lumber camp, has six on wood right now, and he's still going through his Dark Age build, moving, bringing his deer also in towards his town center. Eddie, meanwhile, sending one more villager to wood, so he'll have five on wood, but he's only building one farm, and he's starting to send more villagers to gold, and sending even another villager over here towards these berries. And he doesn't want to build too many farms at this point because he wants the wood for the blacksmith and the market. And since he has all these deer to gather from, all these berries to gather from, and still all these sheep left over because he clicked up so quickly, he's able to maintain his production even though he only has one farm. Now, he needs to move these sheep under his TC, but he'll probably get them there in time. And now, you need 325 wood for the blacksmith and the market, and he's going to have that with some to spare. So, even could build more farms if he wants. But now that those deer are finished, we'll probably see these villagers head over and start taking from those berries. Yep, we see even one villager coming over to gold. Has a few villagers on gold so far. Meanwhile, purple hasn't even clicked up to feudal yet, and Eddie's about to reach feudal. And purple, 27 population. Looks like Eddie's reached feudal before purple's even clicked up. So a very nice feudal time from Eddie, going down with the blacksmith and the market right away. And we notice that he doesn't quite have enough food to click up to the next stage. He's going to send two more villages to gold, but that's what the stone's for. Once he gets that market up, we're going to see Eddie sell stone and buy a bit of food so that he can get up. So if we take a look, once that market goes up, we're going to see villager created, and stone goes down, food goes up, garrisons, not quite enough to click up, going to drop off the food from the berries, there we go, 800 food, and he's up to the castle age. Meanwhile, purple over here isn't even up to the feudal age. Purple went up on, uh, looks like 28 population, so 27 villagers. That's a pretty big population, but he is taking a bit of stone already. We'll see what he decides to do. Three on gold, villager on stone. Eight on wood, but definitely not a bad build, but a lot slower than what Eddie's doing. So Eddie is going to be able to start getting out those eagle warriors first, and we'll see. Building a house, he is at 25 out of 25 population. Of course, he didn't build this house before because he wanted to save as much wood as possible, just like so he could get up the blacksmith in the market. Now, still leaving, adding a few more villagers to wood now that they've finished food. He has a lot of villagers on berries still, so he doesn't yet need to add in too many more farms. But let's take a look at how he's distributed his villagers. He has 11 on wood, now 7 on gold, and the rest 6 on food. That one on the farms, and the 5 on the berries. And we'll see what buildings he decides to go for as he goes up. He could start adding in a barracks, and yep, that's what he's going to do. He's going to add in a barracks, and then he'll probably look to add in either another barracks or a monastery once he gets up. Now, of course, you need the monastery to collect up these relics. Aztecs do have the best monks in the game, and they do gain gold from relics faster. Not to mention, their monks also create faster because of their Civ bonus. And uh, every, of course, every time the Aztecs do a... Monastery research, like Sanctity, or Redemption, or Atonement, they actually gain an additional 5 HP on their monks. And remember, Mangonels only do 40 damage, so monks are a very good counter to Mangonels since they both outrange them, and once they get the Sanctity research, they can tank Mangonel shots. So Blacksmith, I mean, uh, Barracks, immediately making Eagle Warriors, Monastery, going up in the middle of the map. And let's check Eddie's scouting. He has scouted out the relics, he does see there's four of them down there. And hasn't quite noticed the fifth one, but he will notice when he goes to pick up the other ones. So since he's up to the castle age so fast, he will be able to start Eagle Warrior production sooner. Meanwhile, we see Market Blacksmith from Purple as the monks start coming out for Eddie. And he's going with a second monastery. That's that's pretty normal for Aztecs to see uh, barracks, then two monastery. 
but the trick is Eddie needs to be able to sustain production. As we keep looking at his villagers, sending a few more villagers to gold now has nine on gold, leaving eight on this one lumber camp. Now, the longer this goes on, the less efficient that lumber camp gets since the villagers get further away. So at some point, he's going to need to build a second lumber camp um, a bit further forward, just so that his villagers can don't have to walk so far to drop off the wood. And starting to add in more farms, as these berries finish, he will need more farms. But mainly he does need gold, since eagle warriors are very expensive on gold, and monks and their researchers both cost a lot of gold. These relics, though, will help him bring some gold. Now we see purple hitting the castle age around 16 minutes. And Eddie already has out quite a few Eagle Warriors, and he's going to try to get a convert on that scout. Will the scout get away in time? Looks like it will. Monks are pretty slow. As Ooh, could he get a kill on that monk? No, he's not going to go for it. Might have been able to snack a monk there, but just going to try to keep running away. We'll see what he can scout. Hasn't actually found any of the relics or done much scouting yet, so it's probably a good move for him to keep the eagle alive just so he can do some more scouting. He sees Eddie's going for monks and eagles. And this villager, building houses with this villager just so that that villager doesn't have to be idle. Of course, if you build it with that villager instead of the villagers back at your base, these villagers can gather resources. Otherwise, you would have this villager just standing in the middle of the map while these villagers are building the house. And that's basically having two villagers idle. Now, berries are finished adding in some more farms. Now he has six, and still keeping a few villages on wood, but has adding in a second mining camp, concentrating on gold. And let's take a look at his researches so far. Notice that he's skipped horse collar just so he has enough wood to make those uh, that blacksmith and those two monasteries at the beginning. And he's only done double bit axe, no other eco upgrades. Uh, let's see, yep, hasn't even done wheelbarrow yet. So he's just done the double bit axe, not even bow saw yet. He'll probably look to get at least bow star and horse collar sometime soon. But right now, since he went up on 23 population and he really needs to keep this production up to keep the map control, he doesn't quite have the economy to do those economic upgrades yet. So the longer the game goes on, uh, the weaker he'll be because of that. But there is a short term cost in both resources and research time to those upgrades. So sometimes, like we're seeing here, it is beneficial to skip them. And now coming up with the siege workshop, following up the barracks and two monasteries with the siege workshop. Meanwhile, purple has thrown down two extra TCs, and is content just to boom up in his base, starting to pull ahead in villagers. Meanwhile, Eddie, going full into military, uh, trying not to get housed, adding in a few more farms. And he's going to begin to stockpile some gold. More monks coming out, but has stopped producing now. Not producing anything yet from that siege workshop. Collecting up these relics, and he will get all five relics. And having five relics is a massive boost to your economy. It's like having another handful of villagers gathering gold, but you didn't need to spend food creating those villagers, and you don't need the population space on those villagers. With the way Eddie's getting housed, that will also be useful for him, but hasn't enough wood now to start adding in more houses. Yep, building a couple panic houses at home. Now adding in a few more monks and a few more eagles. So he's keeping his production up, Gets out a ram to start pushing in here, and we'll see how purple reacts to that. Now Eddie's starting to stockpile a bit of gold, and that'll be useful if he wants to buy any other resources. He can buy either food to keep pushing out eagles, wood to keep pushing out rams, or even food just to click up to the Imperial Age. As the ram gonna start coming down on that wall, and if we look at Eddie's vision, if he brings the monk right up close to the wall, one, he can get uh, conversions on that on the gold villagers so he can deny this gold from purple and bringing the villager up here he'll also see purple's response because monks with their nine range also have quite a big line of sight and yep he'll use the monk to be able to see that there's a castle going up for purple so nice response from purple walling off uh, preventing this aggression from going in and building a castle to prevent any more aggression coming in from eddie still using this villager to build up more houses in the middle of the map, massing quite a few eagles and quite a few monks. Now, this castle, he'll be able to, Purple will be able to do some jaguar warriors. And we know jaguar warriors do a very good job at 
uh, killing eagles. They have both an attack bonus against infantry and an additional attack bonus versus eagles. But the monks here will be able to protect against the jaguar warriors. So we'll see if purple does go for the jaguars or maybe if he builds up in the back and just tries to get out some eagles of his own. But Eddie now moving some villagers over to stone, and that means that he's going to be looking to get up a castle. Right now he has six on stone, and we'll see he's sending more. And he stockpiled quite a bit of gold, and we see that gold just went down as he bought some food. And it looks like he's going to be trying to click up to the Imperial Age pretty soon. Does have the monastery and the siege workshop. And let's check the eco upgrades real quick once more. Hasn't done wheelbarrow or handcart. Has done bow saw, but hasn't done any of the farming gold or stone upgrades. So just double bit axe and bow saw coming in for Eddie. And one more villager, and he'll probably look to click up after that villager, buying a bit more food right there. And again, with having so many villagers on gold, he's able to buy food to get up. Even though he only has a handful of farms. And here we go, Will Garrison. Just a bit more food. Buying some food, 10 gold, 3 gold, and he's up. There we go. Now Eddie's up to the Imperial Age, and he has quite a few villagers on stone. So that's 5, 10 villagers on stone as he goes up. And he has enough monks and eagles to get map control. Purple decided he was just going to boom up and wasn't going to try and fight Eddie. Um, if he had tried to go for, say, several barracks and monastery, he would have had a stronger eco to sustain production and might have been able to take a fight in the middle. But at this point, Eddie has produced enough units that Purple really needs time to get units before he attacks. But now putting down a, another castle defensively, the problem is once Eddie gets up, he's gonna have a castle and he's gonna be able to make some trebuchets to push into those castles. Now another barracks coming out. Eddie's still producing monks. That barracks will help Eddie get out some more eagle warriors. And Eddie needs to make sure he has a large enough army here so that he can push back anything that Purple tries to do to send more troops to the middle. Now building another castle, Eddie can see that has this monk here doing some very nice scouting. And he sees how Purple's defending. He sees Purple's defending with castles. And he can pretty much guess that Purple at this point since he has those castles, could be producing some jaguar warriors to deal with the eagles. So Eddie just going to produce more monks, and now castle going up in the middle of the map, building that castle with quite a few villagers, leaving a few more villagers on stone, but concentrating mainly on that gold, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight farms there, and a few more villagers on wood. We see he did build a second lumber camp there just to make that wood a bit more effective. Hasn't even needed to touch his two secondary golds yet. This will be running out soon, but these two golds are very safe for him. Purple does have a sizable villager lead though, about 30 villagers, so if Purple is able to ramp up the production, he might be able to push this back. Gonna send a villager out here to try and wall behind that. Uh, we'll see if Eddie notices that and gets the convert in time. Will he notice? No, it doesn't look like he's gonna notice. Now doing fervor, that is, well, useless for him, but because the upgrade's broken, it's supposed to make your monks work, uh, move faster, but it's broken so they only move faster when they're carrying a relic. But for the Aztecs, can be worthwhile to get it just because it gives an extra 5 HP to your monks. Villager maybe could have tried to build one more piece of wall here before Eddie noticed, but that ram gonna get through again. And trebuchet is coming out for Eddie. Still producing a couple more eagles, but doing the Imperial Age upgrades, Illumination, uh, very good upgrade. See, so let's take a look at what the Imperial Age upgrades do. These are all pretty cheap, block printing, press 3 range, Illumination, 50% faster, Faith, uh, regain after a conversion, and Theocracy, if a group converts an enemy unit, only one must rest, so that makes it a lot easier to micro your monks. And of course, Faith, very expensive, but if your opponent is going for mass monks, Heresy and Faith can be useful, but they are defensive upgrades. And now trebuchet out for Eddie, and he's going to be able to start trebbing down these castles. Going to move the ram forward. Uh, if anything, it's going to, give him, going to give him the line of sight to know where the castle is so he can target it with the treb. Now, another trebuchet coming out. Still producing monks. Those five relics helping him get a lot more gold. Now finally, wheelbarrow just coming in for Eddie. And let's check the economic upgrades one more time. Has done wheelbarrow. Has done the gold mining and horse collar upgrades. 
and that castle is going to start to be trebbed down. We'll see how purple now sending a few villages to repair it. That he will be able to repair against one trebuchet, but once Eddie gets out two or three trebuchets, it's going to be very hard to keep that castle up. Already losing a significant amount of uh, hit points. Our purple also on his way up to the Imperial Age. Eddie getting the blacksmith upgrades on his eagles. Going for the, first for the attack upgrades. That's interesting. But now that he has going to get out a third trebuchet. Has some villagers on stone. So he could consider getting up another castle. A few more villagers on wood. This gold about to run out. But still making more villagers. Slowly adding in a few more farms. But... Ah, nice play by Purple, stonewalling in front of his castle to protect the rams, but Eddie has trebuchets, so that stonewall actually is, uh, well, not very useful. It will help him, however, if the castle does go down not have a hole in his walls, so that'll stop the eagles from running in. So pretty good play. Now that this three trebuchet is out from Eddie, I doubt that castle is going to stay up much longer. Purple does have two castles, so if he can produce trebuchets, he can get them out uh, more quickly than Eddie, but not producing trebuchets doesn't quite have the gold he needs. He is going for barracks in the back, and he's going for elite eagle warriors. Eddie, meanwhile, doesn't have the elite upgrade on his eagle warriors. He does have a couple blacksmith upgrades, and now he's producing jaguar warriors, so those jags will be able to counter those eagles. Eagles are a good unit to use against monks because they do resist conversions, but against this number of monks, especially with the Imperial Age upgrade, Eddie will be able to uh, convert the eagles to be able to micro them properly. Now, Jaguar Warriors, still more coming out from the castle. Siege Workshop about to go down, and that second castle... Uh, looks like it's in range of the Trebs, so just in range of them, those Trebs with a massive 16 range, going to be able to start taking out the castle. Purple doing some blacksmith upgrades, Eddie now doing Theocracy, finishing up those Imperial Age upgrades, replenishing his lumber camp one more time. Needs to start moving these villagers to another gold pile as that one's running out. With that one ram coming in, only 4 HP, about to go down. Eagle Warrior gonna die. Had just sent that in for scouting. Not gonna be able to repair against three trebuchets. And Purple just has a whole bunch of eagles. So not gonna be able to make Jaguar Warriors anymore if the castle's down. Eddie, combination of monks, Jaguar Warriors, Eagle Warriors, and trebuchets. That's a pretty powerful army. Now coming in with Redemption so that he can convert any siege. Uh, not gonna be that useful because Purple doesn't have any siege, but it is good to be prepared. So if we take a look at the militaries, purple at this point, six barracks, but only only 21 eagle warriors. And especially since eagle warriors create so incredibly quickly, that's a rather small army. And Eddie has double the size of the army. And now coming forward with the trebs, we'll be able to take out that town center. And Eddie has almost enough stone to drop another castle. So dropping off some stone, not quite enough. Looks like he had to buy some stone there. But we'll probably see him come put a forward castle here to put more pressure on purple. Using the monks to take out that mangonel. We can see purple moving out to this gold mine here. Or, well, mainly taking his main gold. That villager might have just pathed over there. But purple gonna lose a TC, a blacksmith, and a market. And now military is starting to catch up to Eddie. But it's eagle warriors. Eagle warriors aren't gonna hold up very well against these Jaguar Warriors. They are just normal Jaguar Warriors, not yet with the Elite upgrade, and not yet with all the Blacksmith upgrade, but still, they're going to be able to deal with the Eagles. Now here come the Eagles. Military size, pretty even. That castle is going to go up soon. Eagles want to snipe the Trebs, probably should have deleted a, bit, a few more pieces of wall. Sending in even more Eagles, the Monks behind, going to get some conversions. The Jags going to engage the Eagles. Eagles are going to try to take out the trebuchet, but that castle is going to go up. Monks getting conversions, not getting touched by the eagles. The eagles needing to path all the way around this house and this siege workshop. And they're just getting converted. Every conversion gives Eddie another elite eagle warrior to fight with. Now needing to fight underneath this castle. The military numbers from purple just dropping down to 30. And Eddie managing to stay alive, and it looks like he's in a very strong position to take this. Purple dropping down even further in his military numbers. And there's the GG from Purple. He's not going to be able to sustain this push. As 
those. We wait for the Zion Eddie gets up just a few more conversions on those monks. And that's it. So, very fun build from Eddie. Going with the 23 pop fast castle, getting the map control and picking up the relics at the beginning. Purple tried to boom, but Eddie was able to mass up a large enough army in the castle age and then push in with trebs. Use, could use the monks and the few eagles to defend the trebs as he just slowly pushed in and used the uh, advantage of going up to the imperial age to be able to take out the castles because the castles are pretty good at defending especially against monks and just against castle age units in general but once you go up to the imperial age and you have access to trebuchets castles start going down okay let's go take a look at the achievements and we'll be able to see the uptimes so military stats uh purple did mass up a slightly larger army but eddie had the units to counter it even the, the much stronger eco for purple wasn't able to be put to use. He wasted that stone when the castles went down and was forced to make eagle warriors that Eddie could counter with the jags and the monks behind them. Notice that Eddie did focus very heavily on gold and used the market a lot for uh, buying food for advancing both to the castle age and then again even more food to get to the imperial age. And some very fast uptimes we see. Now, 10 minute feudal, that's the type of time, that's the time you normally go for on Arabia. Of course, researching loom and making a villager uh, um, are both 25 seconds, so 22 vills plus loom, or 23 vills, same time. And castle age, sub 14 minutes, very fast time from Eddie. Getting up to the imperial age, still 2 minutes faster than his boomed opponent, and got those trebuchets out to deal with the castles. Had all five relics, got 3,000 gold from the relics, very helpful both for getting the gold to click up and also for producing those trebs once he got to imp. Purple, having more villagers, but in this game, wasn't able to put them to good use. And we see Eddie slowly building up that military during the castle age and then being able to push in. Purple didn't build any military until the imperial age, but still that wasn't enough even with the elite eagles to push into everything Eddie had already built up. Okay, so thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed that uh, very fun game from Eddie, and I'll see you guys in the next video.